it going, everybody? This is Ron Sparkman from Opportunity U, and we've got a very special interview today. It's actually the first of two parts. This person is so interesting that we actually had to split it up because we went over an hour on this interview. So uh, today we're going to speak with Stacey David Severn, and she's this amazing individual that works behind the scenes in so much space and science that it's just impossible to be able to talk to her only uh, for a 15, 20, 30 minutes. So we got some really amazing stuff in today's episode, part one, we're going to talk to Stacy about what inspired her to get into space and science, how her son Elliot actually inspired her to get involved in the space community. Um, what he does, he's a space flight photographer, has his own website. You guys will be able to check out. Uh, we'll drop the all the info at the bottom here. Uh, a little bit about her work with Explorers Club, Space Stories, uh, the amazing adventure journalist Jim Clash. It really is an amazing episode. And of course, in the second episode, we're going to talk a little bit about our work with New Grass Tyson and Star Talk. So, guys, check out this episode. Tell us what you think. Uh, make sure to subscribe, and we'll have part two for you coming very, very soon. And Stacy, how are you doing? Hey, Ron. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, we're we're glad to have you on today. There's really so much to talk about, but you know, the first thing we always start out with is the fun stuff to see kind of what inspired you. So, what gave you your uh, your passion for space and science? Well, like so many old people, you see. <laughs> um, I was a kid when, you know, when we when we walked on the moon and my parents made us stay up late at night. You never forget certain things. We were coming back from my cousins in New Jersey and we were tired and cranky and they said, watch this, you'll never forget it the rest of your life. And it was cool, you know, and then the, the, the Apollo program was always going on in the background of my life and I, I remember... Uh, Remember Gemini? I was little, you know, and, and it was just cool. They were up in space. There were these men in space. Um, so that was all really intriguing. And then I, I grew up and, you know, the shuttles were going up and all this. It was just sort of always there. It was always there in the background. And um, at some point I became a mom. And my son loved science. In third grade, he declared there were no more good books left in his school library. Um, he took every science book out of the library, animals and space and every type of science. There was rocks and we collected rocks and we did all these things. And, uh, and he was nine. My parents got him a telescope, read all the instructions. It was winter. And actually, that's a great time to observe. It's clear, good atmosphere. Um, went outside, froze our little tatas off, uh, <laughs> looked through the crosshairs, then looked in the scope and couldn't find what we saw in the crosshairs. It was very frustrating. And so I kind of packed it up and, you know, was kind of waiting to, to figure out what to do maybe when it was warmer. And summertime came and uh, my dad had cut out a thing from the paper. An astronomer named John Dobson was going to be at our local observatory. Um, one, I didn't know we had a local observatory. <laughs> <laughs> Two, I actually had not heard of John Dobson. And for those um, listening who don't know who John Dobson was, um, he was um, an, an amazing man, and he, he began the sidewalk astronomy movement. Um, he was working on the Manhattan Project and did not know what the goal of the project was. When he found out what that was, he just just really couldn't deal with it, walked away from it, and became a Vendanta monk for 25 years. What? And yeah, no, amazing spiritual guy. Uh, Vendanta, you know, combines the the wonder of the cosmos with religion. And and while he was a monk, he uh, he started making telescopes with found materials. So um, he was able to purchase some porthole glass from a, a shipyard that was doing salvage, and uh, with various chemicals from fertilizer and whatnot. He, he, he did what he needed to do to make the silvering and he ground the, these mirrors, these glasses into mirrors himself and got these big cardboard tubes, uh, things that were being discarded. And, and he, he made these huge, beautiful telescopes that really just opened a lot of people's eyes. And he would bring them out on the sidewalk in San Francisco. He would loan them to neighborhood kids. Um, eventually a movement came up around and called the San Francisco Sidewalk Astronomers and they started uh, bringing telescopes to national parks and just this huge, huge thing. And he dedicated his life to, uh, to building telescopes, uh, talking about cosmology, teaching and going around the world, um, that kind of thing. So anyway, he came to Stratford, Connecticut. 
-hmm. and he was at our observatory and uh, I called the the people at the observatory and I said I have a kid and he's got a telescope and we can't figure out how to make it work and uh, and you know I see you're having an event at the observatory they said bring him bring him bring the telescope so uh, I said are you sure I mean you know this esteemed man is going to oh, bring him bring him bring him so we got there and we hopped out of the car and we were greeted by John Dobson and a couple of wonderful astronomy guys. Um, and they quickly put his telescope together and, and he focused in on the moon and suddenly standing on a box looking through this telescope. He had a line of people forming behind his telescope. And one by one, people came up and he was showing them the Sea of Tranquility at age nine, saying that's where we landed uh -huh. on the moon. That's awesome. That began it. That began it. So in nurturing his love of science, I really kind of became addicted. Um, I was a music major. And uh, as a music performance major, we could take either one math or one science class. We kind of were busy doing all these other things. And so I didn't really have any background in astronomy or anything like that before. And it absolutely amazed me. And um, like so many people who look through a telescope the first time, realizing our place is very small and that what we're yep. seeing through the telescope was probably longer ago than before we were here, um, it was great. So we started going to star parties and, and I got very involved with the observatory being a sales and marketing person. Um, and the, the, the place had kind of, kind of gotten inactive over the years, you know, after the shuttle program, you know, it's became kind of commonplace for people to be going up and down from space and the public at large just really didn't have that interest they had back when I was a kid with Apollo. And so, yeah, um, to wane a little bit. Yeah. 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 And so really honestly, you know, with, with my son's enthusiasm, he sort of jump started the, the guys at the observatory kind of making them a little more excited. And, uh, and I started doing publicity and this and that. We started doing open houses and public nights and bringing telescopes to movie theaters and blah, 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 blah. It became quite a hop in place. So um, that's, that's really how, how all that started. Probably a really long answer to a short question. <laughs> No, no, actually, you you really kind of started. Uh, you really started to get into the, the, the next part of the next question, uh, which is really you know what how you got first involved in the space community, and that's really kind of it. But okay, so you're in the, you're involved in the space community. How did you get to that next level to where you start doing you know some of the things that you're doing now with uh, with space stories and and Star Talk? So what was the thing that was like the first uh, dip in the in the bigger pool, or maybe the deep end of the pool? <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow trying to keep this short <laughs> so all right well first of all there's Neil deGrasse Tyson right so um, uh, again you know uh, I speak about my son a lot because we do a lot of this together and because really it was through him that I became involved in this whole and learned about this whole community and and became part of it so when he was in middle school a friend and I took our sons to the Hayden Planetarium on school vacation and uh, and Neil deGrasse Tyson came out into the planetarium before the show started and he said hi I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, and um, you know I'm 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 running the the planetarium now or you know I'm at the Rose Center I'm the head of the Hayden Planetarium and uh, and I, I'd like to acknowledge a couple of very special people here tonight my parents are here and they stood up and oh, I was that's like awesome. wow there was just something about his presence. He, he didn't speak a whole lot, but I was just very uh, impressed with his presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He certainly you know? got it. He really does. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and bit by bit, you know, we be, be, through the observatory, we went to various events, you know, centering around the future of space flight, um, things like that. And, and actually, you know, Neil spoke at some of those events. And, and you know, each time it was like, wow. This is pretty amazing. I can understand everything so well, and he's enthusiastic, and I just, I was just very, very taken by him. Mm -hmm. And um, a few years later, uh, we and went. This is before the world was taken by him, huh? It, it was, you know, he, a few years later, he started doing Nova Science Now, and I think that that in in my not that I'm any expert on when people knew who he was, but in my opinion, I think that's when he became more visible to the 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 public that wasn't just engaged in running around learning about science. And yeah. so uh, and and you know after that, um, 
they started doing Star Talk. And I didn't know about Star Talk, but the second Star Talk Live, I, I found it on the internet. And, and I was like, wow, they're doing this thing in Brooklyn with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mike Massimino was going to be there. And I was like, wow, Mike Massimino is going to be there. <laughs> so, um, so we went to the Bell House. We went to Star Talk Live. And the format was so engaging and, and so much fun. I mean, it was like I was standing there in the back because it's a bar and, you know, you run out of seats very quickly. It's a big bar, but it's kind of cool place. And we Is it a Star Talk Live at a bar? Yeah. Yeah, at the Bell That's House. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great place. So, um, and uh, and I had a camera, and my son Elliot had a camera, and um, I put some pictures online, and the internet being what it is, and we never had things like that when I was young. You know, you'd have to write a letter to somebody, and they may never see it. Uh -huh. um, Neil saw one of my photos from the show on the internet, and got in touch with me, and said, "We'd like to use your photo." And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I was <laughs> okay. so excited because somebody that I had admired so much, you know, wanted to use my photo. Um, so I said, sure. Um, and then we went to a, another Star Talk Live. And um, then we met Jeff at one of them. Jeff being our social media director, for those who don't know who Jeff is. Jeff Simons, social media director for Star Talk. Um, and, uh, and well, it's an awesome new book out, by the way. Yes, he does. We'll promote that at the end. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk yeah. about Jeff a little bit later. <laughs> Jeff's cool guy. Jeff's got so much stuff going on, man. You can't even keep up with Jeff. <laughs> Jeff is a, he's, he's a great guy. Love <laughs> Jeff. So, um, so at any rate, um, Neil liked my pictures. Now, it's, it, this is the irony because I am not a photographer. My son is a professional photographer, and he does rocket launches and all kinds of things. That's Star Talk too now, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but he was in college at the time, and he liked my pictures, and so I kept coming back to the Star Talk Lives, and they would ask me to come and I'd take pictures. And um, eventually, um, I asked if I could work for the show. Now, back at the time, um, you know, the show was on a grant from the National Science Foundation, and really, oh, really very cool. Yeah, yeah, it was like an experiment, you know, to see if if this way of that. yeah, to see if this way of engaging the public in science would catch on, which it did. Um, and so yeah, I, I I volunteered for for a few years, and I eventually, you know, as as things took off, and 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 we were doing more and more, and bringing in more guests, and diversifying. Now we're into television, as you know, and we have several podcasts. Mm -hmm. New one just launching right now called Playing with Science. Yeah, Chuck kills it in that one, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and for those listening, it's all about sports um, and science, the science behind sports, and particular historic plays and things like that. And the host is actually an ex-footballer from the UK. So um, pretty cool stuff. And Chuck Chuck is hosting it with him. And Neil, you know, will make appearances from time to time. Great show. But so now we've got all these things going on, you know, and, and it's, mm -hmm. just, it's, it's just really wonderful. So... That's, uh, that's, a, that's amazing to hear, and obviously you guys are only growing by leaps and bounds, and we'll certainly get into Star Talk a little bit later, but it is not the only thing that you do, although uh, you know you, it is certainly something I'm sure that takes <laughs> up a great deal of your time, and uh, you do it happily, which is uh, another thing we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, So one of the things that you do is you work with the Explorers Club on space stories, and uh, we were talking a little bit about this late last year, and unfortunately I was, uh, I was a little too busy and I wasn't able to come, so can you tell people a little bit about what the space stories is, and yeah. uh, also, you know, kind of how that got started, how you got involved in it. Yeah, so Space Stories, Space Stories, bleh, I can't, Space Stories. Um, is, Say it is, three is, times is, fast. Space Stories, Space Stories, Space Stories. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an amazing day. Um, uh, I've been involved in it twice now. Um, and uh, it's at the Historic Explorers Club in New York City. Um, if people don't know what the Explorers Club is, look it up online. But people like Sir Edmund Hillary and, and Teddy Roosevelt and you know, all the mountaineers and astronauts and everybody who's who's really deep into any type of exploration um, is a member. It's a very prestigious or organization. It's and, amazing. Uh, I got to see it before we <laughs> actually, I got to see it the morning before the Star Talk Saturnalia party, and it was incredible. It was amazing. It's 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 got artifacts like, you know, flags that have been on the top of Everest. There's one flag that was at the highest and lowest points in the world. It was at the top of Everest, and it was in the Mariana Trent. Yeah, it was James yeah. Cameron. Um, and I was lucky enough to be at that interview with him, um, hearing all of his stories about that. Um, and so um, a few years ago, I don't know when, uh, Charlie Duke was interviewed at the Explorers oh. Club. 
Apollo 16 moonwalker, the youngest man to walk on the moon. And he's the astronaut who left that picture of his family on the moon. You might have seen a picture of that. The oh, little picture yeah. of the family yeah. in the dirt. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so we, we went to that. And I, like you and everybody else, was just kind of blown away by the history and the place and absolutely just blown away by the interview, hearing the accounts firsthand, you know, from the people who, who lived them and did them is, is just such a living history and so amazing. And so the interviewer, um, a fellow of, of the uh, Explorers Club and Board of Directors, Jim Clash, who's an adventure journalist and no slouch himself. He's, you know, climbed mountains and, and you know, swam in the North Pole and the South Pole and skied in the South, all these, he did all these crazy things and he drives fast cars and he, he jumps out of things and really, really he very a for Virgin Galactic too, doesn't he? Yeah, he has a ticket for Virgin Galactic. Yeah, a yeah. Really, really amazing guy and, and he did the interview with Charlie Duke and, and we became very good friends and um, you know, I supported Jim a lot throughout his Exploring Legends interview series. Um, many of his interviews that I was fortunate enough to attend were with astronauts um, and other just amazing legendary people and you know he's chronicling living history um and i was fortunate enough to be there for his interview with john glenn wait wait can and, i i'm gonna go back real quick because i want to quote you on that he's chronically living history that's one of the coolest things i think anybody's ever said about any other person well actually <laughs> i think i said he was chronicling living history oh i thought you said he was chronically <laughs> living history which is an amazing i'm so glad i heard that i think he's doing that too <laughs> <laughs> he really is. He really kind of is. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So I, I was there for for the interview with um, with John Glenn and Scott Carpenter um, months before Scott passed, and you know, it's just some of these amazing, amazing people, and hearing their stories and being able to ask them questions. He interviewed um, Owen and Richard Garriott together. Owen Garriott was uh, an astronaut on Skylab and also on the shuttle. And his son Richard, who's very, very famous in the gaming community, known as Lord British, um, Richard actually paid to go to space on the Soyuz, and his dad was his Capcom, and he did all sorts of science experiments up there, and actually designed a software that they use on the ISS now that helps them take pictures and find their targets on Earth. Oh, that's amazing! So, yeah, they were they were interviewed together, and um, and you know just just great, great stuff. So um, so. Jim was on the Space Exploration Committee with Leroy Chow, and, and they asked me to join it a couple of years ago. And, uh, and together we've been able to, um, you know, engage some amazing people, um, both, you know, astronauts and people in every facet of the space industry, both NASA and independent, and bring them together for full day programs. Um, the first one I did, we had two Apollo astronauts. We had Charlie Duke and Walter Cunningham. Mm -hmm. um, we had Katie Coleman was there. We had a Skype interview with um, Ian Anderson, who played a flute duet with Katie when she was in space. <laughs> she actually took his That's flute awesome. up to space. She, she played Ian's flute in space. Um, we had Bill Ingalls, the chief NASA photographer there. We had Brian Binney, the, the first pilot for Spaceship One with the X Prize. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had a, a, a conversation with Alexander Gerst on the ISS by ham radio during the program. It was just like an amazing, amazing day. Um, and we did that again this year. We had, you know, other people. And so we plan to do that again. It's it's a great program. And uh, that, I mean, I guess that would be the the, the next question. Uh, what's, what's the news on the next event? Do you guys have anything, you know, down so far? I mean, I know that's kind of, uh, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of work to kind of put those things together. So yeah, do you guys have any... Any news well, on the next one? I don't want to say anything. It, it takes a lot of, uh, it's very difficult to schedule, as you can imagine, some of these mm -hmm. people. So, um, you know, this last one, I had probably spoken with, I mean, I think we had six speakers or eight, I can't remember. But, you know, I spoke with at least double that many, um, some from Apollo. Well, different astronauts and people in different walks of, of life in the in, involved in the space industry. So we have a few people we're speaking with and uh, don't have a date yet, but looking forward to the next one. 
Awesome. And you know, let us know. And obviously, yeah, we'll let everybody know an opportunity to you and let them let them know it's coming up. And hey, here, here's that's trust me, that's a place you want to be. Uh, if you've never experienced the Explorers Club and especially what they put together, I mean, it's you can't say anything else but world class. Uh, you walk into a place and it's got a, 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 a stuffed polar bear that you can stand in front of. You know that they've got their stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a little bit ago, you talked about uh, the uh, uh, I think. Did you say he's an explorer journalist? Is that what you, you put, Jim? An adventure journalist. An adventure journalist. I like he's that. I really do. He's, kind he's of incredible. Experiential. You know, he goes out and he does things and writes about them. And he interviews many people who do things, too. <laughs> Yes, and that's really kind of uh, – I love yeah. it. And I know that you work with him, and you're always um, – you kind of work with him to get his interviews out there and a lot of work that he does. And I actually didn't know about him. I know about him because of you, and now every time that you post something about him, I, I listen to it. Uh, Jim is actually very um, – he, he very much lives a life that I'm working towards living. I love the stuff that he does. I know that he loves, uh, he's, you know, a mountaineer and he's, he's been there and done that. He wants to go to space and, you know, he really does. He, he's somebody that's gone out and lived his life. And I know it's somebody that you work with uh, quite a bit. And um, he does a lot of uh, amazing interviews with people that's in the space industry as well. And I know you were kind of touching on a little bit, how you kind of met each other and started working, but um, you know, kind of, how did you guys know that that was uh, you know, a working relationship that was going to continue? Cause I know you guys do a lot together. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it started with a picture. Everything seems to start with a picture. So um, It's worth a thousand words, I hear. <laughs> right? Well, you know, my relationship with Neil started with a picture. Um, my relationship with Jim started with a picture. The, there was a, a certificate that he gave Charlie Duke at the interview, and mm -hmm. he, he wanted a picture. And I said, wait, we have a camera. We'll take a picture. So emailed him the picture, and then we just started chatting. And then um, – uh, he came to a Star Talk Live with me when we had um, Buzz Aldrin on, and he and Buzz are very good friends, and it was a real fun night. And then, you know, just started doing stuff, taking pictures at his interviews, and, you know, we just became friends, so we've done a lot of neat things. And yeah, he and he's great. I mean, if you guys um, don't know about him, if you haven't heard of him, definitely check out his work that he does in Forbes. And he really he runs the gamut. Uh, it's it's people in the space industry from you know major major uh, you know people from astronauts to you know the people that have run NASA. I mean, he really kind of goes over everything. So if you're interested in anything interesting, <laughs> Jim's Jim's probably up to it. And uh, you know, as you talked about it, you know, uh, really um, photographs and uh, photography is really something that's kind of been a lot to this and. Uh, your son Elliot is the one that inspired you to kind of get into it. And, and uh, Elliot, for those that don't know, Elliot Severn is uh, an amazing photographer. He has uh, spaceflight photography, and he is uh, a great science writer in his own right. And he's always involved with these events. And I know he shoots for he shot for Planetary Society, and he does mm -hmm. all these different things. So uh, Elliot, uh, well, and we'll probably eventually have him on the show as well because he's done so many cool things. And um, the really cool thing for that you may have experienced in that most people don't it's inspiring and keeping a child's uh, fire going whenever they find the love for something. So what kind of advice do you have for people that are out there that have their kids that are involved in science and maybe they don't know what to do next? Um, how did you stoke that flame? How did you keep that going for him? Or did he kind of do it on his own? Which it seems like he's kind of a self-starter. <laughs> oh, I, you know, he, he, he did it. He had the flame on his own. I just fanned it. You know, I, I gave him the opportunity to uh, to do great things with it. We went to star parties and, um, you know, uh, there's something called the Northeast Astro Forum every year in New York. And it's like the biggest trade show for telescopes and that type of thing in, the, in I think, in the country or maybe in the world. And, uh, and they have wonderful speakers, and, and we met Story Musgrave there when, when he was a little, when my son was little. Um, and, you know, from a very early age, you know, he started meeting people who have really done great things. And um, he was always very, very, you know, humbled by, by meeting these, these amazing people and, uh, and, and learning things from them. And, and, you know, he became very good friends with John Dobbs, and they built a telescope together. John oh, stayed amazing. at our house, and, yeah, God rest his soul. We thought he'd make it to 100. He made it to 98. Uh, um, that's incredible. And, uh, yeah, and so, you know, I mean, my advice to parents, you know, um, realize that, that you know, it's like <laughs> it's like when you see these, these parents that, that just, you know, figure their kids – need to eat chicken nuggets and french fries but don't really give them other things to taste um, i see a lot of that in general you know sitting kids in front of the television or 
involving the kids in more activities than maybe they should really handle. Um, just keeping them busy for the sake of being busy. But when a kid, you know, shows an interest in something, I felt that it was my obligation to follow that and give him the opportunity to pursue it and learn as much as he could about it. And he ran with it. And he's a he's a, a wonderful guy, a great adult now, you know. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> I, I'm I'm thrilled that you know I I was able to spend all those years you know with him and and sort of you know just just guiding him and and bringing him to things that interested him and you know being able to uh, involve him with people that really boosted him along. I'll tell you, the guys at the observatory were fantastic for fanning the flame. They took him right under their wing, and it was like he had a, a dozen fathers right there who were just, mm -hmm. you know, really, really just wanted to teach and pass that torch. So by age 10, he was standing on the ladder at the telescope, and when the school children came in who were his age or older or younger, he would stand there and, and teach them about what they were looking through in the big telescope. So... He took to it. He took to it. And, and that, I think that's really wonderful. And, it, and it's something that um, you've really kind of talked about just the way that Neil is and how kind and um, and approachable he is. I mean, he even made the joke when I first met Neil, I was as nervous as anybody could be meeting anybody. He says, now that you met me, I'm sure you could tell, you know, you can say, you know, I'm pretty approachable. So you could say something. So are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm not okay. I'm still really nervous. But, you know, he's <laughs> he's really great. And so are so many of these people. Um, they're so they're so approachable, and the thing is, is that we want those of us that love this want to pass it on to the next person. Mm -hmm. We want to be, we want to answer every question. We want to be involved in that. And uh, you know, Elliot had it done for him, and now he's doing it for people. And um, yeah, and that's actually, uh, you know, we were we were actually, I was I was really going to kind of pull him in for a minute, but he is he is tonight. He is at a local museum, right? Isn't he? Um, he's doing he something is. with Boy Scouts tonight, right? Yeah. Well, he's teaching at the Discovery uh, Center, the, the Discovery Museum. I'm sorry, the Discovery Museum here in Connecticut, the Challenger Center. And so they do um, moon missions and Mars missions simulated with, with school children and, and scout troops. And last year he spent the weekend with, I can't remember how many, like 35 or something, Boy Scouts who came in from out of state and they did their astronomy badge uh, with him over the weekend and they did a simulated space mission as well. So a lot of great stuff out there and it's, it's wonderful to see him teaching. Um, and, and in a setting that kids are really motivated and unhindered by some of the things that the schools are layering onto the curriculum with standardized testing and, yep. you know, all this stuff that gets in the way, um, you know, it's, it's just the pure love of science in, in this kind of setting, which is wonderful. And um, mm -hmm. I just want to say, you know, one other thing, that a, a lot of these events are, are really accessible to the public. NASA has a fantastic program called the NASA Social. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Their goal is to get as many people tweeting about this stuff as possible and get the public excited. And um, and one of my son Elliot's, um, his second rocket launch actually was with the NASA social. It was STS-135, the final shuttle launch. And um, that gave, you know, access to actually have, you know, viewing and, and education and speaking with astronauts and all kinds of great stuff. And I had attended a NASA social myself for um, SpaceX CRS-1 when it flew its first cargo mission to the ISS. And uh, and again, you know, in the interest of, of promoting and, and good journalism and, and raising public awareness, um, it's invaluable to NASA to have citizen scientists there. It's invaluable to the attendees to have that experience. So from there, you know, things branched out. And, you know, he, he does remote launch photography and, and journalism. And, and uh, you know, I go to the launches and I cover them from the Star Talk standpoint and mm -hmm. social media and, you know, blog posts and, and things like that. And so it's, it's, it's a real nice pairing, but um, access, is, access to launches is, is really it's a very special thing, and, and people do have an opportunity to do this through NASA. So, 